Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 2003 horror sequel, Jeepers Creepers 2. Now, this is one of those films where, just like the first film, I do have a little bit of nostalgia for, because I did watch it for the first time with my dad as well when I was a teenager, but... I actually think the first Jeepers Creepers is a legitimately good horror film. It's not great, but it's good. This, on the other hand, pretty average. Pretty average. Like, there are some interesting ideas. I don't mind the initial setup for the the, the setting or, or the plot of the movie with this busload of teens being the target of the Creeper in the middle of a desert. And I like certain characters like Jack Taggart but it's another one of those instances where the salva stink is all over this film and it's even stronger this time around than with Jeepers Creepers so before I get around to sharing more of my thoughts on the film, I want to give a special shout out to Seth for yet again requesting another video. And if there's another film TV short topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to donate to my PayPal. The link will be in the video description down below, and I'll try to get to it as soon as I possibly can. Now, Jeepers Creepers 2, just like the first film, is written and directed by Victor Salva. And his direction in this, I would say... Honestly, I thought his direction in the first film was better. Maybe it's because the script was better. Maybe it's because it was the first Jeepers Creeper. So maybe he was trying to be a little bit more ambitious, trying to be a little bit more risky with the camera uh, techniques and the movements and the different kinds of shots that he was employing. This kind of feels uh, like it's sort of playing it safe. Or if it's be taking risks, it's taking risks in the wrong way. Like... I do not like the way that this film is lit most of the time, like especially in the opening sequence, this, this orangey just mess. That's exactly what like the opening sequence looks like. like it's, it's like you put a filter over everything and it, it looks, it looks pretty bad to be honest. And there are a lot of other moments where it, it just, it looks like a cheap sequel. And I don't know if it's really the direction that's to blame, but I think it's part of it because some of the shots are pretty flat looking. I thought uh, the fact that they tried to do more with the practical or the visual effects this time around was kind of was a mistake because less is more because there were some moments in the first film where some of the effects were kind of uh, uh chintzy looking and then here is like it's even more obvious like some bad green screen at one point uh when the creepers on top of the bus and it's stolen some guy's head and it, 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 it's some really bad green screen and there there are a few other moments like that but then there's some other moments where it looks kind of good looks pretty good with the creeper flying around and stuff like that and i do appreciate that Salva tried to do a little bit more here with the sequel in terms of the stunts and he shot those scenes pretty well, but it just doesn't, it isn't as creepy. It isn't as eerie. It isn't as, uh, uh, unnerving as the first film visually. It, it feels like it's even more slick and even more like MTV style than the first movie was. So the direction it's fine, but I honestly do feel it's a step down from, uh, Salva's work in the first film. Uh, the script, I also feel, is another step down in quality. I think the script in the, uh, the first movie that Salva wrote, I, I felt that that screenplay was far more effective and definitely more consistently solid when it comes to its storytelling or the characters. The characters in particular, other than Jack Lambert, Ray Wise's character, whom you sympathize immediately with because he lost his son to the Creeper, I don't give a shit or care about any of these teenagers. I liked the bus driver more than any of the teens in this. They felt like completely interchangeable, disposable, cannon fodder, 
uh, characters. Not much to them when it comes to charisma or character. Not much to them when it comes to really genuinely caring about them on even the basis level. Uh, I'm supposed to just care about them because they're young and they're the target of the creeper. No, that, that, that doesn't work for me. And yeah, it's not a lot of memorable lines for these characters to say. It also doesn't help either that there's way too many of them. Like you have this entire basketball team and the, the water boy and the coach and a bus driver and all this other stuff. It's like, there's too many characters. Like, Jeepers Creepers was at its best when it was just two people or was just Justin Long trying to traverse and find a way out of the, the cathedral of pain. Uh, here you got this busload of teens whom I don't give a shit about who are either a bunch of dumb, unlikable jocks or uh, they're just not likable, period. Or there's nothing to them except that they just exist. And the creepers stalking them and you're like, I don't really care. So I it, it gets kind of boring. I, I I'm not as invested in the script or as in the plot as much as I was in in the first movie. I do appreciate that Salva gets around the fact that. He set rules where the creeper only comes out and and eats people and and goes on a killing spree at a certain particular time and you know there are I think it's like twenty twenty two days or twenty three days and it happens like every twenty years or something along those lines. So we set a very concrete timeline and he just sets it on the last day uh during the same timeline as the first movie i thought that was actually a good way to work around the limitations and i like some of the added stuff with the creeper like showing the creeper get more and more damaged and showing how the creeper heals itself how it steals body parts and uses them and makes it a part of itself. I thought that was uh, pretty cool and 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 uh, interesting, especially the way that it that the the script handled that. Like I said, I do I do like the character of Jack Lambert. I think the character uh, of uh, I mean Jack Taggart, Jack Lambert. That's that's an old uh, Steelers uh, a football player, <laughs> a guy who had the missing teeth. Um, but yeah, I like the character of Jack Taggart. I wish he was in the film more along with his uh, son, his older son. But I don't like the opening uh, because it's just, it's an uncomfortable, just uneasy extension of Salva's depraved tendencies again. The Creeper... The first victim the creeper takes is an underaged boy. It's a little boy. And you know that when Salva's writing that, it, it's the reason why it's a little boy is because it's kind of like a uh, instance of Salva embodying himself in the creeper in that instance. And that's creepy in a in a way that's skeevy and and just, just slimy and, and just feels wrong. So if it was you know directed or written by anyone else, then maybe it wouldn't necessarily have that vibe. But the fact that the creeper is this creature that tastes your fear and like licks people or and and peeps and glares at, at, at people and does all this stuff to try to taste how scared you are and is perverted and has these per, uh, just disturbing tendencies of his own that are identical to the things that Salva uh, is is clearly into or, or was 
more into at one point in, in his life. It's just like, eh, it really does. And then it just feels even more upfront and in your face when it comes to these tendencies in this script, because you have the stuff with the teenagers, the teenage boys sunbathing on the roof of the, of the school bus, the, the scenes where the creeper is, is essentially peeping at them. And this is just like, ew, it's, it's just, it's gross and it's creepy, but like, it's just not, it's not creepy in a way where it's it's fun to watch. And I guess maybe that's the point. But like I said, if it wasn't Salva and his stink wasn't just permeating and just sticking to everything in this script again, then maybe, you know, it, it wouldn't be something that would stand out that much to me. But since it's Salva and I know what he did, it's just it's it's gross. It really is that it. It's I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's, it's gross. And. Yeah, I, I don't like that stuff. I don't like this. The teenagers, they honestly suck. Don't like them. Don't care about them. Don't care where they live or die. Feel the same way about the cheerleaders, too, including the lead girl, the lead final girl. Um. A double D, yeah, her name is yeah D. I I think double D. Yeah, yeah, DeAndre, but but I don't I don't think I think double D is a different guy. Like it's a different character. See, I don't even remember the characters. I don't even remember any of these characters. They didn't really. Leave that much of an impression on me, you know. I I like I the the character, the two leads, the brother and sister in the first movie. They left a significant impression on me. I really liked them. I don't really remember any of these kids like uh, D Double D and uh, Scotty and Minxy and Izzy and Chelsea and Bucky and Rhonda and. I mean, honestly, I remember the bus driver lady, Betty, more than anyone else. But yeah, just weak, weak cast of characters and just made a mistake by having too many people on that bus. And I don't think it was a good idea either to like have the creeper have more, you know, weapons in his arsenal. I, like, like, I felt that was a little, uh, eh, especially when the effects look really cheap, like the, the things that he's throwing to like pop tires and stuff like that. And I'm like, what is that? Like a lost prop from without warning or that old movie from like the eighties. Um, and it was weird stuff too with Justin Long where he, his character shows up. And he's like warning people about the creeper. So it's like, okay, huh? But yeah, the, 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 the script, it does a good job with Jack Taggart. I like how he takes it upon himself to take out the creeper. And he's got this harpoon gun on the back of his truck. And I even like this setup that they have for like the sequel for the third film where it'd be 20 years later and he's captured and incapacitated the creeper and, and nailed him on his wall. And he's waiting for the time when the creeper is supposed to wake up again so that he can kill him again or kill him for good this time. Although it sets up a sequel that you don't actually get because from what I've read, Jeepers Creepers 3 isn't even connected at all to Ray Wise's character or anything like that. And if it is, it's one of those lame things where, oh, he dies or there's some other bullshit. But yeah, it's just, I don't really, the script, it's it's average. It is, it's as average as the the final film, as, as the, the full movie. It has some good things like Jack. Uh, his harpoon gun, 
The Creeper has his moments. Uh, I think it has arguably the best and most creative kill in the entire franchise where the creeper grabs this guy with his wing and suffocates him to death with his wing and then decapitates him. I thought that was, that was pretty creative and, and unique and, um, not something you see every day, but you know, other than some moments like that and, and, you know, few other things like not really that special of a script and the performances aren't that special either i mean other than ray wise and jonathan breck as a creeper i mean gary and uh, gary Aki, uh, uh um mutam boria as, as double d uh, eric neninger is scotty like the guy seemed like he was your typical type of character that you would see in the CW or, or any other like teen soap opera drama. It's me, the CW, like this entire cast, the way the film was shot at times, it really did. It felt like a CW version of a horror movie. And I'm like, I don't like that. I don't want to see gossip girl featuring the creeper, you know, that kind of thing. It's not really my cup of tea. Um, Nikki Acox is Minxy, meh, Travis Schiff Schiffner is Izzy, eh, Lena Cout Cardwell is Chelsea, I mean, that's, that's really how I feel about the majority of these performances, other than Ray Wise is Jack and Jonathan Breck is the Creeper, Jonathan Breck is still a really imposing and intimidating presence, and I can see why people who are fans of these films and fans of the creeper as a character, they want to, to prop up Breck as a horror icon. I can understand that because he has that kind of presence. He really does. Uh, I just wish he was in a better film. It's not that the film sucks. He's definitely not the problem. It's just, it's just very run of the mill. But I know there's a lot of people who feel the opposite. There's a lot of people who think this is better than the first movie or it's an underrated sequel. And that's cool. That's fine. You know, teach their own. I'm just, I, I, you know, I'm not really in that boat. Like if Ray Weiss had more screen time, if uh, uh, Luke Edwards, who played uh, Jack Jr., if he had a little bit more uh, time on the screen, a little bit more development, a little more to do. I mean, hell, if he even like expanded the role of the bus driver played by Deanne, Diane Delano, uh, that would be an improvement because I like Diane. That's another one of those performers that actually delivered and had some screen presence. Unlike all of these interchangeable Abercrombie and Fitch models that the film was chock full of when it comes to the cast. And it's, it is a film that is slower in pace than the first movie. It's like 104 minutes and it drags its feet a little too much at times. It makes the climax not as thrilling or as exciting as it could be. And it definitely doesn't help that I don't really care about the two survivors that much. So really the only bit of suspense that's going on is whether or not Jack and his son are going to get harmed or or killed by the creeper. Um, and even so, you know, you have Donnie Fauntleroy who comes back as the cinematographer. Ed Marks also edits the movie, but I don't feel either of them do as good here as they did in the first film. But then I don't know if it's really necessarily a technical problem. It really just might be due to the script and how just, middle of the road it is and you know how just mad the overall screenplay is in terms of the quality the music by bennett salve it's serviceable that's another thing it's like there's so many things about this movie where you're just like that's okay it's fine it's decent but there's not a lot other than breck and his performance as a creeper uh some of the practical effects uh, the performance by Ray Wise, some of Salva's direction, 
some of the elements that he uh, implements in the script. Other than that stuff, there's really not a lot that's genuinely good or great about this movie. There's just so many things about it that are just mediocre and so-so. So, yeah, I, I know it seems like I don't have a whole lot to say about the movie because I really don't. I don't have a whole lot to say about it because I don't think this is much of a sequel, that much of a film, uh, other than like a few little bits here and there that there really isn't a whole lot to, to really run home about with this sequel or with this horror film. I wasn't really that scared. I wasn't really that uh, um, unnerved or taken aback by things other than stuff that ties into uh, Salva's own kinks. But other than that, like, not much. It's kind of disappointing, especially after it had been a long time since I saw it last. And I remember it actually being creepy or fun to watch or or a film that was actually good from the last time that I saw it. But after I watched it again, it was just like, it's just okay, I guess. Like... I'm not going to say that it's a full on rant or it's a, it's a film that I didn't care for at all. But like I said, I like Ray Wise. I like Jonathan Breck as a creeper again. I like some of the kills. I even don't mind the idea of the kids on the bus, but I don't like most of the kids. So that kind of defeats the entire concept and, and, and really brings it down and gives it a flat tire. But yeah, I mean, could do a lot worse. And definitely, that definitely did happen with this franchise. Because uh, this film, even as mediocre as it is, it's a million times better than any of the sequels that came after it. But anyway, I got nothing else to say about Jeepers Creepers 2, except thanks for watching my review of the film. And until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.